Here we're going to consider an application to the one-dimensional particle in a box. We're going to look at butadiene and we're going to use quantum mechanics to calculate approximately the length of butadiene using particle in a box one dimension. Okay, well, why can we use particle in a box for this? Well, let's consider again butadiene. I'll draw it here and you may remember from organic chemistry Butadiene, I'll draw the structure C double bond C, C double bond C. All these carbons are sp2 hybridized, which means that butadiene is uh, along a line. And if they're sp2 hybridized, that means there's an atomic p orbital left over that was not used in the hybridization. So here's the atomic p orbital. And these atomic p orbitals can overlap and form a molecular orbital across the entire length of butadiene. So here's a linear molecule and here say the electron is in this particular molecular orbital and the electron can travel back and forth here. It's approximate uh, <laughs> description. So hey this is a particle in a one-dimensional box and the length a would be the length of butadiene. So let's go ahead and use the uh, concepts we developed in particle in a box and apply it to this particular case, approximate case, where you have particle uh, electron moving back and forth along a line, like a particle in a one-dimensional box. We solved Schrodinger equations, uh, meaning we got the wave function and the energies for particle in a box. The wave function normalized was the square root of 2 over a times the sine of n pi x over a, those are the wave functions, and the corresponding energies. n here is a quantum number, so n we label the wave function by a particular quantum number. n could be 1, 2, all the way up to infinity, infinite number of wave functions. The corresponding energy for n is just n squared pi squared h bar squared over 2 m a squared. All right, so those are the energies. Now the problem states that uh, what you have are some energy levels here, say n equal 1, n equal 2, n equal 3. Note these are not to scale because it goes as a square of the n. The problem says that if you go between n equal 2 and n equal 3, you either absorb a photon if you're going to higher energy or emit a photon if you're going to lower energy of 217 nanometer. So the difference between n equal 3 and n equal 2 is a photon of 217 nanometer. All right, this corresponds to a certain energy. What energy does that correspond to? Well, the energy of the photon, and let's call this a delta E, so it'll be the difference in energy between 3 and 2. Delta E is hc over lambda. Okay, and we'll put that in. Uh, H is uh, what, uh, 6.8. 626 times 10 to the minus 34th, pretty small number. C is 3 times 10 to the 8th, and lambda is 217 times 10 to the minus 9th. Now I've expressed all these in SI units. This is the SI unit, SI unit, SI unit, so that my en answer, energy, will be an SI unit, will be in joule. We put these into our calculator, we get 9.17 times 10 to the minus 19th joule. So this energy level separation is 9.17. Let me just clean that up a little bit. Okay. 9.17 times 10 to the minus 19th joule. That's the energy level separation between those two. Now we can calculate from the particle in a box model what we expect for the energy level of the n equal 3 and what we expect for the n equal 2. We just put n equal 3 here and then n equal 2. Subtract 3 from 2 and that will give us the energy level separation from particle in a box and we equate that to the experimentally measured energy level separation. So let's go ahead and do that. The experimental energy was 9.17 times 10 to the minus 19th, everything in SI units, so I won't have to carry around the units. That's equal to, say, the energy uh, for n equal 3 minus the energy for n equal 2. 
That's what we experimentally measure. Let's calculate that from particle in a box. So this would be 3 squared, uh, pi squared, h bar squared over 2 ma squared minus, for the n equal 2, 2 squared, pi squared, h bar squared over 2 ma squared. Or, in other words, this is 3 squared minus 2 squared times pi squared h bar squared over 2 m a squared. Let's go ahead and put some numbers in. 3 squared minus 2 squared. A pi is 3.14 squared. h bar, remember h bar, is defined as h over 2 pi, and that is uh, 1.056. Uh, uh, I think, times 10 to the minus 34th squared, divided by what's the mass? That's the mass of the particle, which is an electron. This is 2 times the mass of electron, 9.1 times 10 to the minus 31 a kilogram SI unit times a squared. And that's equal to 9.17 times 10 to the minus 19th. Let's solve this for A. A comes out to be 5.8 angstrom. Okay, A in here will be meter and we just uh, convert that to angstrom. All right, so is that a reasonable number for the length of butadiene? We get 5.8 angstrom. Uh, yeah, probably carbon carbon uh, bond lengths are on the order of 1 to 2, so 2, 4, 6, yeah, that's a reasonable. So this shows that um, the particle in a box uh, model can be, in a one-dimensional box, can be applied to something like butadiene. Of course, we selectively chosen <laughs> 3 and 2. What happens if we choose 1 and 2, or why not like 5 and 6? We chose 3 and 2 uh, to get approximately the right answer. All right, so there's an uh, application of particle in a one-dimensional box.